Welcome to our review on human infections. So what we're going to do in this video is have a look at some common human infections, their causes, symptoms, etc. So the first one is athlete's foot. Now the picture on the left hand side I've shown you in a previous video. And for those of you who really do enjoy my pictures, then in the bottom right, you can also see the close up of a toenail showing you the delightful infection of athlete's foot. So the cause of athlete's foot is a fungus called dermatophytes. Now, these love the warm and humid conditions that we tend to find in sort of socks that have been dried out properly or slightly damp feet between the toes. It's all warm and humid where they can grow nicely. Typical symptoms that we get there, the cracked, flaking and itchy skin, as you can see from the picture on the left, and it's spread through direct and indirect contact. So obviously don't stick your foot on someone with a gross crusty foot because that's going to lead to you getting the gross crusty foot as well. But the more likely source of transmission tends to be through the floors of changing rooms and showers in communal areas. In terms of what we can do should you find yourself suffering with athlete's foot, it's just an antifungal cream. So nice and simple treatment. The second infection we're going to look at is food poisoning. Now, the causes of food poisoning tend to be bacterial. Now, the problem with these bacteria is that they produce toxins which give us all of the symptoms of food poisoning. So, three examples of bacteria that lead to food poisoning. Campylobacter, which is the one they tell you you find on chicken a lot of the time. So, it's on raw meat, unpasteurized milk, untreated water. Salmonella, which is on raw meat, eggs, raw unwashed vegetables and unpasteurized milk and E. coli, which is the raw and undercooked meat, unpasteurized milk and dairy products. And I've given you the pictures of those three bacteria around the edge there. So Campylobacter is the little spirally looking one, Salmonella to the left there, and then the bottom right is E. coli. In terms of the conditions that these bacteria need to survive, they're pretty hardy things. They can survive freezing and refrigeration. So just because you've shoved a chicken in the freezer doesn't mean that it's going to kill any of that Campylobacter that may be on it. The only way that you kill them is by thorough cooking of that food. If you are unlucky enough to suffer with food poisoning, then typical symptoms are stomach pain, diarrhea of different levels of severity, sometimes rather mild, sometimes rather explosive. You can have vomiting, sometimes if you're really unlucky, both vomiting and diarrhea, so have a bucket, and also a fever. Obviously, it can be a lot more serious and could lead to death if left untreated. In terms of how these tend to spread, it's down to poor food hygiene. So if you've been poking raw meat and then you go and touch something that's cooked, if you're storing cooked and raw meat on the same shelf in your fridge, for example, Anything like this is likely to lead to its spreading. How we treat it? It's fluids. So just replacing those fluids will take care of most of these cases and your body will flush through the bacteria in time. The third type of human infection are the sexually transmitted infections or STIs. So they're caused by a range of different bacteria and viruses and they spread from person to person through unprotected sex or genital contact. Now, they can also spread via bodily fluids or skin on skin contact at that point. And what we're seeing is that there's often asymptomatic periods. So that means that there's a sort of period of time where you don't show any symptoms and that increases the risk of spread. Because if people aren't showing symptoms, they don't think there's anything wrong and therefore don't necessarily take the steps that they should. In terms of how we can protect yourself from an STI, then two choices really. One, use condoms if you are going to have sex. Alternatively, just avoid sexual intercourse. Here are four different common sexually transmitted infections. You'll be pleased to know I haven't put up pictures of all of them because that would be a little bit too graphic. So chlamydia, first of all, is a bacterial STI and the symptoms of chlamydia are pain when urinating and then a discharge from penis or vagina. In order to treat that, it's a course of antibiotics. Next one, long gonorrhea, again, bacterial infection. Again, we get this kind of pain when urinating, but it's a burning pain. 
and vaginal discharge. Obviously, that's just in women. And again, it will be treated with antibiotics. Third one along is our first viral STI, which is gentle herpes. So that one gives you these painful blisters or sores, which I did give you a picture of. And there is no cure for this. Anytime there's a flare up, you just need to avoid having any kind of direct contact with the actual sores themselves. Last one, HIV, again caused by a virus. So the symptoms we get there is a weakened immune system, which often results in AIDS long term. There is no cure for our HIV infection, but we can control symptoms by using these antiretroviral drugs, which will be taken throughout the rest of your life. If we have a look at HIV in a little bit more detail, HIV is the human immunodeficiency virus. And what happens upon infection, it's going to invade the white blood cells and reproduce inside them. Now, the downsides to that happening is that it's going to, first of all, destroy some of your white blood cells as the virus particles burst those cells. And secondly, it prevents the white blood cells from producing antibodies. So because your immune system is being very much weakened as a result of this, then you are more susceptible to common infections that ordinarily your immune system could fight off. When we're talking about AIDS, that's the final stage of HIV infection. So this will occur where your body can no longer fight off these life threatening infections. So that's kind of the stage that when people are suffering with AIDS, they're right at the end of their life there. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe those common fungal, bacterial and sexually transmitted infections, as well as recalling the difference between HIV and AIDS.